this video, we're going to be sharing with you part two of our how you can become a better Madden player, how you can build your own offensive scheme video series. It's just a couple of series videos that I wanted to break down, just kind of giving you the nuts and bolts of what it looks like to create an effective um, offensive scheme from from scratch. If you want to check out the playlist at the end of the video, that'll if you didn't miss part one, um, that'll be there for you. But guys, my name's Cody. We do videos every single day that help people become better at Madden. And so if you're <clears throat> if you're looking to get better at this game, I'd really encourage you to hit the subscribe button down below. It's free to do that, and it just keeps you updated on all of our latest updates and videos. And in our first episode of this, we talked about the importance of audibles and base play, and we broke down one of the best base plays, I think, in the, in the game. So our audibles, we had double post. Um, you could have inside zone here. You could have... Um, sale dig there's you can kind of do whatever you want with this run audible um, I like to have just the basic inside zone and then we have um, sale dig I believe and then we don't want to have PA read because that's in another formation so we can have something else here so we can use uh, corner strike and then we can combine this with the doubles flex because it, the formation basically looks identical so we're going to use um, this corner motion smash it gives us a corner route on either side we talked about the importance of that you could use one of these rpos if you wanted to to mess with that i don't really like to play with rpos personally um so we're just going to we're just you could use this flanker corner play because it does have that hitch to the has that blue route to the tight end it also has this nice fade route you can cancel that auto motion so there's something there if you wanted to mess with that um, but i'm going to pick flanker spot um, or, you know, what we can also do is put the inside zone here as opposed to having it in the other play. And then we can have a basic four verticals. Um, or what you can do is have, you know, whatever. So this is kind of the formation. I call this like my, you know, basic, basic set where I have, you know, kind of my basic stuff. So you can do this, this FL drive play um, if you want to. Or you can do the four verticals. I like the FL drive because of the rounded streak. So we're just going to put that there. But anyways, now today what I wanted to do is I wanted to talk about running this formation flipped and how it can be very, very good. So, um, and then I'm going to talk about, uh, we're going to give you another setup today too as well. So one of the things you want to understand is should you flip your formation or should you not flip your formation? And that's based on the formation itself. It's based on some of the things. And one of the things we're going to talk about today is the importance of having your running back on the right side of the screen as opposed to having him on the left side of the screen. So what you're going to see here is if I run this inside zone, you see it's kind of honestly a slow handoff and it's not super, it's okay, but it's not great. You see how long it takes to get the ball in the running back's hands. Now, another illustration for you real quick. If I run the play uh, PA read, you'll see this real quick. So you'll notice that takes a long time to get done and now I can throw. So it takes a little while for the animation of a run or a play action to occur on the side of the field okay one of the things again i want you to notice is if we audible all they do is change where they're at so to me this is a fairly effective you know formation for that reason alone you know and then you can run your your corner route to attack 30 yard clouds on the left and you can attack 30 yard clouds on the right or at least force them to have that in their coverage so i want to talk about running this formation flipped as a general basic principle um, so if I flip this play and we're going to come out and let's say we're running, um, we'll just come out in our, in our base play, if you will, let me find it. We talked about our base play halfback wheel yesterday. Now, what makes this good? If you watch this handoff animation, you're going to see he's going to hand it off way faster. So much faster, much cleaner, much smoother handoff animation. And now this inside zone, because it's not so long developing, I can cut this back over here and run it to the right side. I can run it down the middle. I can run it on the outside to the left. So this is kind of my three-headed rushing attack in one run, which is really helpful for your offense. So as you can see there, um, you know, stuff like this is important to understand. Should I, if I run to the right, do I get a faster animation? Well, if my running back is to the right-hand side, you'll see here these play-action animations. I did a video on this the other day. Um, these play-action animations are so much faster if that running back is on the side that the quarterback's gonna throw with. So if he's a left-handed quarterback, then you might wanna change what you're doing. But as you can see right here, this becomes a very, very effective, um, you know, little tactic. So I recommend uh, running this formation flipped. 
Now, another thing you're gonna notice is when we're to the short side like this, if I audible to this formation, you'll see that these guys are gonna do their thing. This guy's gonna stay out here. Um, but you'll also notice if I go to play like flank or spot, did you see that he moved inside? Um, if I'll drive and motion smash, you'll notice that he's gonna stay outside and then PA read even. So that's another kind of piece of advice. So if they move when you motion a certain place, where this does happen, you might want to consider um, you might want to consider not not moving them. So you know, just something to think about. But today we're going to talk about the counter to um, the counter to halfback wheel. So this is what halfback wheel looks like. And I talk about a power counterplay like a one-two, like a jab, 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 and then right hook. A play that looks very similar to that play, but it's a little bit different in terms of the basic uh, principle. So what I like to run instead of um, instead of this play is I really, really like the um, PA read play for this. And the reason why is because a couple reasons. This running back arrow route is really effective. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to put Godwin on a fade. And then with the tight end, you can kind of do what you want with him. Um, my personal recommendation, if you have a tight end apprentice, is to put recross or him. That'll just get him to go a little bit deeper. So you see, this is basically the concept right here. It's probably one of my favorite plays of the game. And it's a fluid read. We're going to read high on the right, low, crosser, no. But this post route is really the money route. And this post route is the route that you can throw against anything. Um, it's actually probably best if we're on the other hash, but you want you, it's not hash dependent. And that's one of the things about this. So if you're going to run your formation like this, you kind of need to be aware of like the hashes a little bit, how they affect your formation, how do your plays work on the short side versus how they work on the wide side. That's something you want to think about because now that we have, this is more of like halfback wheel is more of a play for the left or for the right hash. This right here is more of a play for this hash. So anyways, you'll see right here, you've got this little route here. See how they suck in and then I can throw this for, you know, an easy five to 10 yards every single time. One of the things I want to point out about this from a pressure perspective, um, which it doesn't always happen this way, but from a pressure perspective, what you'll see here is when I run this play, you'll see here, sometimes the blitz will just get picked up. See that, see how the only player that can come in was my user so that's something else that you want to kind of just tuck away it doesn't pick up every blitz just because they're in play action but it does pick up a lot of pressures and i'll show it to you again here i'll try to get my user out of the way so you're going to cancel the play action and look i mean here it doesn't come in but you know it is what it is so you can kind of see how that can help a little bit um we have other plays that you can use from this but anyways let's go back and um continue showing you the setup for this so this is just a real simple read. I mean, it really is. You don't have to recross for the tight end. Just fade Godwin. And you'll see here, you've got this nice little flat route. You've got this post, though. And this post, as I throw my second pick running it, um, you've got to kind of lab the, the throw. It's a little bit of a nuance. But basically what you want to wait for is you're waiting. I'm playing a cover four. Most people aren't going to play cover four. But if they do play cover four, um, you'll see right here, when he comes across, you want to throw it right in the middle. And you see how I get this aggressive catch. It's one of the best things about this post drive is we get this aggressive catch. Now, let me show you that from a cover three or three high shell. So if they're in if they're in cover three, um, if you wanted to put your tight end on a tight end apprentice post, you can. Um, you'll see here, it's not really that bad. Um, they definitely go into a different space. And what it does is it gets that tight end to get a little deeper. Um, another thing you could do if you wanted to is put the tight end on a smart routed in. Um, or heck block the tight end and you could run a setup that looks kind of like this if you wanted to do it like this this is fine as well something like this real simple and um, what you'll see with this post route is it's one of those routes we can wait on so you'll see how when he crosses that safety he's going to still go and we can throw this at kind of an interesting area now if you run this on the other hash mark the second setup I'm giving you is, is probably a little better for the right hash but what's really cool about this concept is you've got a hitch on the line of scrimmage you could block the tight end for extra protection you've got play action blocking best blocking in the game and then now you have this and if you wait on this pass lead that to the right you're gonna see here 
he's gonna he's gonna basically make a lot of user plays for you um, over the middle. Now another thing that I like about this about this play, I'll show you. Notice he doesn't really move. So if I motion him to the right, you're gonna see he's gonna come all the way across. So that's just something. So you have a corner route that you can build on. You know what I'm saying? So don't don't just think, oh, well, I have to do it this way. You don't you don't have to do it this way. Um, but anyways. What you'll see here is he's going to work this whole space. And really, you want to throw the ball kind of over in that pocket um, if you can. If you're going to throw it over the middle, like let's say, for example, this is really the perfect play, in my opinion, for like a 30-yard cloud scenario. So if they're doing a lot of Mabel, this is a really good route. You've got your little hitch. If you want that hitch to be a drag, you can. Um, let me make sure. My adjustments are registering. So you'll see here, if I wait, once he crosses the face of that safety, bam. See how the see how that guy is sitting there? That's something you gotta pay a little bit of attention to with this route. But normally speaking, in my experience, you can throw this earlier, um, just like you can throw it later. And He's gonna stop running about right when he gets to the numbers. So you see, he kind of turns his back, throw it there, and you've got a low. You might have to low ball it, but you're gonna try to cut this off. Now, where this play really, really shines, and I'll show it one more time against cover three, and then I'll show you where it really shines is against man to man. But anyways, let me see. You could also do something like this if you wanted to. So something like this have a seam streak seam streaks are always hard to guard and it helps clear out the third as you can see um, so you can do that as well but where this play really really shines is man to man so if you're getting a lot of man to man this is probably my favorite play in the game and uh, or not my favorite play in the game but my favorite one of my favorite plays in this formation so we're gonna fade this outside guy so if they shade underneath you might have the bomb over the top the next thing we're gonna do is you have this pivot route. Now this pivot route is good. Um, if you want to leave that, you could, okay? Then you have this tight end crosser. Tight end crossers are really good, notoriously good against man to man. And then you have that. And that right there is, is probably, um, I just personally think just the way the route works against man to man, it's really hard to guard this route against man to man. You wanna throw it right when he cuts inside. And I'll show you again here. See how he gets inside leverage, throw inside, aggressive catch. Makes it, it's just a perfect route, kind of shields the, the opponent from the ball. Now I'm gonna shade inside and underneath just to show you what it looks like here. You could actually, if you wanted to leave this comeback route on, if you're running it up against a lot of man-to-man, -man, then you could turn this into a mesh, like so. But anyways, you'll see here. See how he's still gonna get inside position. He's still gonna beat him to the inside, so. It's just one of my favorite routes against man. And then a lot of people, what they like to do right now is they like to shade outside and underneath in their coverage um, to try to help disguise it. So what you'll see with this with this uh, route combo is this fade on the right. If he gets a step over the top, just loft this out there and you wanna try to make a play. As you can see, a lot of times that fade could be the route. And what's also really good about this, again, I can't stress this enough, but how good it is um, when the fade is on the line of scrimmage. So if you wanted to run it from the other PA read, you certainly could. But anyways, that's gonna cause them to have to shade their coverage over the top. And if they shade their coverage over the top, now your zig is gonna be wide open. So, you know, as you can see, just some simple things that you can do to beat man out of this. So it beats man, beats zone, and then uh, match coverage is gonna beat because the backside is gonna basically be man to man on that player so this is kind of one of my favorite plays especially for the two purple stuff if you're getting a lot of this two purple defense where they have two you know curl flat zones this is a great play because it, where this post gets open is right inside of that and it still gets under the third so love that route against man this year i think it's probably the best route in the game for man coverage in my opinion 
thank you for watching the video this is how to get better at madden how to get the scheme um, how to build your own offensive scheme there's a playlist that you can watch to get everything this is a small example of what we do in our ebooks and if you want to get all my madden ebooks you can join my patreon for just ten dollars and unlock everything over there thanks for watching the video and i'll see you guys next time